So as a result of President Donald J. Trump winning the election in fears of mass deportation, Haitian migrants have fled Springfield, Ohio in droves. Let's talk about it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, fleeing in droves as a result of President Donald J. Trump winning the 2024 presidential election. Now, what's happening is the migrants think there's going to be mass deportation and there will be mass deportation. But because of that message being out there, they're trying to get out ahead of time. Look at Trump, not even the president yet, the president elect, and is already making change happen. This is a good thing. And before I go any further into it, I just want to make one thing crystal clear. I am not against Haitian people. I am not a racist or xenophobe or anything like that. However, what I am against is a town of, what, 55,000 people being just inundated with 20,000 people from one place who don't have a lot of the things you need in the community to make it work properly. You see, they come to work and the employers are saying they're great workers, they're on time, there's no drug problem. And that's the thing we're not used to in our community. So what that translates into is a lot of our community in Ohio have problems with the drugs and not showing up. They don't want to work, all this and that. That's what they're saying. Now, on the opposite side of that, the migrants also can't drive. So there's a lot of car accidents. Uh, they are crashing in people's houses, causing all kind of damage, damage in the grocery store when they go in there, just taking sauce off the counter, putting their fingers in it and throwing it on the ground when they're finished. They don't have English, so they're going to need tutors. Who's going to Their kids are going to need to be taught. A lot of them got HIV. It's a lot going on. It's a lot of social cost and actual physical dollars cost that goes into these people all in exchange for productivity. And of course, they're getting subsidized by the federal government to do all this. Now, imagine if so much effort was poured into regular Americans, how much better the workforce would be without all the extra stuff they got going on. Now, before I go any further, let's look at an article right quick. Then we're going to get into a video about the mass deportation that will take place once we get the orange man back. But you see what it says right here. Haitian immigrants flee Springfield, Ohio in droves after Trump election win. And it says city subjected to false rumors from Trump loses residents integral to community over mass deportation fears. Now, that's an uh, interesting headline from The Guardian. I guess this is more of a, a left website. I've been to The Guardian before, but I can't really say I pay attention to how they, how they leaned uh, politically. But you see what's going on here. So they're, they're, they're leaving. Look, it says some folks don't have credit cards or access to the internet, which is ridiculous. Everybody got a phone. I've seen plenty of them got phones, but they don't have credit cards or whatever, and they want to buy a bus ticket or a plane ticket, so we help them book a flight. People are leaving. All right. So I'm not mad at it. I think it's a good thing because although you may get some increase in productivity for employers, you are having a lot of costs associated with the productivity that isn't really worth it for the community. Uh, a metal company, steel company, chicken plant, something like this. They're hiring the Haitians. They're great. It's all good. But the cost associated with the so-called better labor, cheaper labor is very expensive. Very, very expensive. Now, let's get into this video right here about mass deportation. This is going to focus on New York, but the same thing applies to a Springfield, Ohio, uh, Denver, Colorado, Chicago, Illinois. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are the first city, Chicago. New York, hopefully you guys are the first cities to benefit from mass deportation. And of course, as always, I will link to this video and the article and everything in the box. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Well, Trump's plans for mass deportations as many migrants living in fear and uncertainty. And as Ali Bauman reports, the changes may challenge New York's status as a sanctuary city. 
cuatro meses llevo aquí. Deanna Rosales arrived in New York City from Ecuador with her newborn four months ago. She asked we not show her face for fear of her family's safety. Now, when she says she arrived from Ecuador with a newborn, was the baby already born when she got here or was she about nine months pregnant and then popped the baby out as soon as she landed making an anchor baby? There's a there's a clear distinction, okay? Because you guys know what an anchor baby, you are not going to get deported because they're not going to deport the parents and leave the little Google Gaga by himself in the States. You cannot deport the baby. If the baby was born in America due to, um, birthright citizenship, a fear, which has become more familiar after the election. Sí, miedo, sí. Yes, I'm afraid. She told us in Spanish because I have nowhere to go and I'm in a bad situation right now because my baby's father was detained. Migrants are very worried. So they detained for what detained because he's here illegally or detained for not only being illegal, but committing the crime because let's not act like these migrants are just hardworking and they don't do anything wrong. Sometimes they commit crime as well. We know about TDA, the Venezuelan gang, and a bunch of other gangs that have come across the southern border. We've even had terrorists come across the border and try to commit a terror attack. We've had that happen over the past few years come to us with that sense of urgency, like what do we do now? Power Malou helps connect migrants in New York City with legal services. He says that task has become more urgent with President-elect Trump's looming plan to deport potentially millions of undocumented immigrants. We tell the migrants not to worry, not to give any information out to anyone that is outside of the authorities. Trump's pick for border czar Tom Homan promises to carry out his mass deportation plan with or without the cooperation of so-called sanctuary cities. Out, out, out. Gotta go. Gotta go. Listen, and, I, and also, I'm not anti-immigrant. You want to come to the country, do it legally. Don't try to finesse the system. Don't try to bogart the system. Don't try to just, you know, consume our resources. You want to come here, be part of society, do it the right way. That's the way it should be. And a lot of my legal immigrant friends will tell you that the, my legal immigrant friends are some of the biggest opponents of this influx of migrants we've had during the Biden administration. They're totally offended. It took them years, tens of thousands of dollars. They did everything the right way only to have somebody come across the border illegally and get everything handed to them when the legal immigrants got nothing. They had to come to this country and make something for themselves. We'll know who we're going to arrest, where we're most likely to find them based on numerous inv you know, investigative processes. Tuesday, Mayor Eric Adams said he plans to reach out to the incoming administration. The city rules are clear. Um, no city resources can be used to uh, cooperate or, uh, or collaborate with ICE. I think that should be modified and I think it should be changed. In Basically, he's saying that it shouldn't be a sanctuary city anymore. Now, I don't know how that process goes. Is it a is it a city thing? Can you can can the mayor change that status himself or is it a Kathy Holchul New York state government thing? However, that works. Let me know in the comments. I'm not quite sure how that really works. In an interview this week, Holman said if sanctuary cities like New York don't help the federal government's deportation efforts, then he may double the number of immigration or ICE agents that are sent here. He's setting up right now a battle, a battle between the federal government and the state and city government. Mm. Attorney and political expert J.C. Polanco says the fight could come down to the courts. Can now, one thing about it, the border immigration all of that that's a federal government responsibility that's their responsibility this is why when texas is trying to do things to you know keep the border secure because they, they got to do with that right there when they're trying to do that here come the federal is getting in the way you see that's how that works so you're talking about a battle between the states and the feds that's already been going on and what we're trying to do right now is end this whole process in this whole just boondoggle mess, whatever you want to call it, so that battle didn't have to be waged anymore. Can a locality decide to circumvent federal immigration laws and prohibit federal law enforcement from doing its job? 
That's going to be the question before the Supreme Court. In the meantime, Deanna Rosales says she accepts that she may have to return to Ecuador. Entonces, por uno pagan todos. I came here to work, not to commit crimes or steal, she says. If the president is going to do what he has to do, then what can I do? All right, so there we go. Shout out to everybody that is going to get deported. I mean, hey, it, it was it was nice. It was it was a cool. It, it was it was fun while it lasted, I suppose. But you got to go out, out, out. And as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to all the legal immigrants again. Shout out to all the legal immigrants because you guys did right. Listen, I have no problem with the law being followed properly, but I got a problem when the law is not followed properly and or when we're being taken advantage of. That's what I don't like. As long as that's not going on, then I'm cool. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your thoughts on this whole situation? A lot of the migrants in Springfield, Ohio, and probably other parts of the country are self-deporting. Before we even get the orange man in there, before we get Tom Homan on them, before they even happens, you already know what's going to go on. You're going to get those who self-deport. You're probably also going to get fewer people that come to the border in general because they know in 2025, they're going to have a hard time. They might get sent right back to the country of origin. So why pay this coyote? 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 US dollars to get smuggled across only to get sent back in a month. It doesn't make any sense, but whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. This is a fantastic thing. I love it. This shows that you can't do this. We're not just an open border place, letting everything go on, crime, drugs, guns. We, we can't have that. The... Biden administration's solution to the inflation problem is to bring in cheap third world labor. That's the solution. But what they did was create a bunch of other problems that the people, regular, you and I, we got to do with it. The feds don't have to do with it. The state people don't got to do with it. We got to do with it. And that's part of the reason why we got the orange man back in office. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.